Okay, so here is the deal. After all the hate that I got for my Huawei P8 Lite 2017 review, I took a while to think about of how I should actually put out the review for the Huawei P10. Should I be a little bit softer, just to not get so much hate again, or should I be even harder to show that I don't let myself get intimidated? But in the end, I decided to do the only thing that is a viable solution to me, and that is to be just as neutral as for any other phone. And let me actually sum up this phone in just one sentence and one sentence alone. It is the best phone I've ever reviewed so far that I don't like. And I know this sounds weird, but give me a few minutes to actually explain this and back this up with objective data of why it's great, but also why I don't like it. So if you are okay with that, let's just start off with the design and build. Build, absolutely top. It doesn't creak, it feels super solid, and it is actually quite sturdy because it fell down, slid over two meters on the concrete, and as you can see, only this little nick. The rest is survived really nice because it even slid on the display and nothing has happened, so quite sturdy. But this is not the only great thing because the design is also quite nice because it's quite compact and especially narrow, which makes the one-end usability actually really good. And due to the nice curves all around with the 2.5D glass, it just feels also very comfortable in the hand. So they did a really Really, really nice job here even though it's maybe not the most compact one especially with the top and bottom bezels but otherwise we can see the laser autofocus with the two LEDs and the dual camera on the top the microphone on the left side the SD card and SIM card tray on the bottom USB type C the microphone the speaker on the right and the headphone jack on the left in terms of buttons I could not praise this anymore because this is pretty much the most satisfying audio and also tactile feedback that I've experienced so far. It's so great, the buttons are easy to reach in a really convenient position, really great. We have a notification LED, and as you can already see, we have the fingerprint reader now on the front, which also kind of replaces the on-screen buttons, but it just doesn't have to, because the best thing here is, as you can see, if I press the power button, the display turns on super quick. And in some ways, reacts even faster with the fingerprint reader, which is almost unbelievable because sometimes it just feels like it would do nothing. It just turns the screen on even faster than the button itself because you don't have to press it anymore. This is so great and you can see it actually does something because nothing happens here. So this is the best ever fingerprint reader that I've used. And as you can see, we have the on-screen navigation bar buttons. If you decide to use the home button as a button, you have just, just then, if you just tap it, it is back. And if you long press it, it is for the recent apps and there is the swipe gesture. I will get into that a little bit later in the software because maybe I've messed that up. Now let's talk about another thing that would be the display because the option that we have here is of course to change the color temperature, which is always something that I've liked to see. But let's talk about the actual qualities. A maximum brightness of 720 lux, which is super bright and ends in a really great display because after all, it is nicely positioned in terms of the white. The black is also quite good, even though I think the IPS glow could have been a little bit better. I've seen this already better on some flagships. Otherwise, viewing angles are absolutely stable and the calibration is still very good, but for some reason it just doesn't wow me anymore. It feels not undersaturated, but just a little bit boring by now. I've seen just devices that feel a little bit more accurate, more saturated, more pleasing, I don't know. So this is still a very good display, but it feels like last year's screen display already from the Huawei P P9 and with the new flagships coming out in 2017, this feels a little bit just not enough. Now, let's talk about in the next thing, the speaker here. Obviously, as you have, as you, as you, if you, <laughs> obviously, as you have seen, Cupping helps, but it is not necessary because the maximum volume is actually really, really good and louder than most speakers out on the market. And the sound is at least decent, if not actually good, because it doesn't feel too thin. It could feel a little bit richer, maybe a little bit more nice, a little bit more in your face, but it still gets the job done totally nice and is a very good, especially due to the very high volume without any distortion speaker. Headphone jack though on the bottom, still I would say just about average, it didn't wow me at all, it was actually quite disappointing to still see a flagship in 2017 with just about average of a headphone jack. That's what it is. Now let's get into the performance, lock it and kill off all the apps. Let's launch a few ones. As you can see here, these launch 
actually quite quickly and it is a very snappy and very responsive device i really have to give it to that it feels snappy and with the four gigabytes of ram also very capable in terms of multitasking but the browsing as you can see here is very smooth it still does a little bit of some blur due to the ips display and i've seen this already better on some months but still this is totally nice and the browsing experience is top but same goes also pretty much for all the apps because as you can see very responsive very smooth very nice and quickly to switch between all those apps and it feels very consistent in terms of performance but i also have to say it does not feel quite what i would have expected from a 2017 flagship because yes it feels mostly very nice and like i said with the multitasking being very capable it feels also able to handle all your tasks very well but i don't know what it is but this is what we have seen already late 2016, so I would just expect a little bit more from a 2017 flagship. Otherwise, though, in terms of games, a really good performance here again, because it's just pushing 1080p, which results in quite high frame rates, also very consistent, so you can play very demanding games without any problems. Of course, the device gets noticeably warmer, but I still wouldn't call it hot, and it didn't feel like it did throttle either way, so you can play games for quite a high amount of time without any kind of degradation in terms of performance and the gaming experience is absolutely top. Now let's talk about the next thing which is the battery. A full charge and this is the odd thing because there are two values here. Just think of the first one. The first one is with normal charging with a normal charger that doesn't use supercharge and the right value is with supercharge and here I think supercharge is kind of a fake because as you can see the first 30 minutes and the first hour are a little bit quicker than normally but as you can see with out supercharge or with supercharge it ends in about two hours and ten which is not flagship level charging anymore because most do this in an hour and a half and i've seen the huawei mate 9 charging faster so i'm not quite sure why this one takes actually that long of course don't take this as a fact because i've seen a lot of people actually charging huawei devices faster so this is just what I've experienced. It could be faster and it does start very fast, but it also starts to slow down quicker than normal with or without the supercharge. But this is just what I've seen. Now, in terms of YouTube, a little bit disappointing with just, or let's say, which actually a lot, 11% per hour. I've seen a lot of phones by these days to do this already better. And it is, in the end, just a decent battery life because it doesn't feel optimized. I'm not quite so sure if the Kirin 960 isn't as efficient or if it's the lack of optimization of Android 7.0 because four hours or just about barely four hours of mobile data use, maybe five in mixed use and barely, if at all, six hours on Wi-Fi is not all that great, especially since the standby range was very, very flaky because sometimes I had like 15% per 10 hours sometimes though it was just 10 sometimes it was a little better so this was very flaky and what i could have done now is maybe uninstall apps to try to improve this but this would not be fair to all the other phones because i always install on all review devices the same apps and now getting rid of some trying to improve the battery life just would not be fair so i have to use the same standards and here this is just about a decent battery life it is what it is. Now I'm turning on software. What we still have is if we unlock it, we have here the quick settings or kind of quick settings like shortcuts and so on. Something that I've never really used and I kind of doubt most anyways will do this. Now I know before I do something wrong here, let me quickly show that the, we have a home screen without an app drawer or without. And I know a lot of people will now complain about the fact that I did not use the default launcher. And just to show that it wouldn't really change anything, let me go to the home launcher. Now we have it. We don't have an app drawer. And it is what it is. But I personally just would not keep up with this because Nova Launcher or any other launcher won't impact the performance at all. So just this is something that I have to point out. Quick settings, absolutely nicely done. Still, I would wish for the theming engine to actually impact more of the design because it doesn't really do much of a change. And in terms of features, like I've already said, in the smart assistants, you have to change the options, for example, to change the smart cover and so on. One-handed UI, of course, if you want to make it smaller, for example, here, as you can see with the Smipe, <coughs> this is available, so no real complaints here. Everything is fine. We have the floating dock, but I really don't want to go too much into that because especially something like the navigation bar here, as you can see here, you would have the off-screen one and then you would have the different optimizers. So a, a short tab, a long press is home and left and right is for the quick settings. And I think I've said something different later on, but this is what it is. Of course, some other 
settings here. But we don't have to waste too much time on it. I still think that the UI with EMUI has become better than EMUI 4.1. But it's still not quite up there where all the other ones are. There are just a, some more streamlined ones, or more repeating ones, especially better optimized ones, because I still see some weirdnesses going on, especially like the screen dimming. That is something that I just want to show off, because this is something that I personally get a little bit annoyed by, because if I would launch now a browser and we use the Google site, as you can see here, now it's white. But if I use the quick sense, you will see this, it dims. As you can see here, it gets bright now, and now it dims. And this is just something that has to do with their browser dimming. And I don't know why this happens, because every time you get into any app that is related to something with the browser engine, the screen dims by at least 10, 15%. Not so much noticeable if you use automatic brightness, but for someone with a fixed brightness who switches between the browser and on and off and off, you will notice this personally, it annoyed me quite a lot and I don't get why they're trying to do this because I don't want a lower brightness in the browser. It just doesn't make sense to me. It is running running Nougat, so we don't really have to talk about that. So let's just go into the camera here. And the qualities of the selfie cam are absolutely respectable. I would I would call them very good, but not really much more. Because as you can see, there's still some a little bit of blurriness here. It doesn't really get anything superly nice in focus. The colors are mostly fine. Looks a little bit pale to me, even more so than in reality. But otherwise, in terms of exposure and so on, absolutely fine. No real complaints. Indoors, it gets a little bit more blurry than it is already usually though fine and like i said very good to the least and if you want to see the video here you can see this absolutely nice this one is actually sharp smooth and absolutely knows to deliver here no problems at all now let's talk about the low light shots here one with the flash looks absolutely nice without noticeably more blurry and a little bit weird goes a little bit into the yellowy side as you can see here low light pictures can be quite sharp the shadow provides a still very fast experience and it also focuses quite nicely so I would say at least very good in terms of low light brightness, no problems here at all. If you go outside and have better light, even though it wasn't the best weather, you can see that we can get quite nice pictures with a lot amount of details, quite a good sharpness. The autofocus was reliable at all times and the shutter speeds were fast, great outcomes. And I definitely can easily call this a great camera. Absolutely no problems at all. It's, it is above very good for sure because it's very reliable. I almost had no misfires at all. So very satisfying. Great, absolutely nice, very natural colors. Maybe not so much on the viewfinder on the display, it looks quite oversaturated, but in reality on the monitor, this looks really, really nice. Now let's talk about the video. This would be 4K, of course, the video that you are seeing now is just 1080p, so you won't see the full quality, but it looks nice. It feels a little bit jittery, which is pretty much normal for 4K, but it's mostly smooth. And the autofocus, as you will see now, here also works very subtle and works very reliable and very smooth. So really nice job here done. And if we can see this once again, you, now the autofocus, very good job and really nice sharp picture. But if we go now and check 1080p 60, it looks noticeably less sharp, which is of course obvious, but I've seen a few 1080p cameras doing a little bit sharper. Also, what I've noticed is that the autofocus doesn't seem all that reliable. It seems a little bit more shaky, a little bit more wonky, just not as reliable as you can see here. It just doesn't feel as smooth a little bit more jumpy. But this is pretty much all that there is to say about the camera, because like I said, really great for stills and at least very good for the video. Now, let's get into the pros and cons already to cover this up. Premium build, it feels very sturdy, it feels very nice, did catch my <laughs> my my throw down on the butter on the floor quite good actually very good design as i said one hand usability was nice the buttons feel absolutely amazing with the best ever fingerprint reader that i've used the display for a flagship is just very good of course in general you could, you could call it great but in 2017 with all what we know is coming out it's just maybe not quite impressive enough anymore the speaker though at least very good if not even great because it's very loud and sounds quite nice after all decent battery life i don't know if this is still a pro and a con as well because it's not bad but it's also not great the software is good also not great but definitely also not bad then we have a great photo camera as i said and <coughs> at least very good for video now what's not that great 
I have to point this out, it is the poor display coding. It is not as bad as on the P8 Lite 2017, but it still picks up a lot of smudges and it came out of the box with a screen protector. I took it off because I wanted to see how the coding is. And I have to say it, it is disappointing because it is quite sticky, not nearly as big of a problem as on the P8 Lite 2017, but the problem is still that it's very hard to clean and it just looks nasty all the time. This is just something that I don't like so much. Now I know a lot of people now would say everyone uses screen protectors anyways. Well, I don't and I don't know many people who do, but I totally get that if that is a viable solution for you, it's fine. It's not for me and I have to review the device as it came out of the box. Now I know it came out of the box with the screen protector, so it is what it is, but the screen protector actually was even more so sticky and did even pick up even more so fingerprints. The next thing, like I said, display doesn't wow me, not a problem, that's why it's in brackets, but one thing that was a little bit also annoying here when it comes to the display was that it dimmed in browser applications, something that is a little bit of an annoyance. Some would maybe call it not a problem, but it's an annoyance that just doesn't have to be. Then average headphone jack, which is actually quite disappointing that still nothing has happened here. We have underwhelming battery life after all, because even though it's a pro as well, because it's not bad, it is underwhelming because I think in 2017, it looks like a year that battery life will take a dive again. And this is kind of the first phone that proves this to be right. Supercharge, like I, as I said, feels a little bit fake because it doesn't really charge faster the whole device just at the beginning. And EMUI still doesn't feel so optimized. Like I said, the screen dimming is something that I think is weird because it didn't happen on the P9 or on the Honor 8 and so on. And there are some little bit of quirks sometimes in the software and the odd standby drain and so on. So this is pretty much where I'm gonna leave it. Now let's get to the final words here. Priced at around about, uh, I've already seen it as low as 530 euros in Germany. I got it from Cyport for around 600, which is a little bit higher should still drop for 530 if the screen coding is no problem for you the screen dimming is no problem i could in theory absolutely without any doubts recommend it but i won't like i said just from a subjective standpoint because for me personally the screen coding is a deal breaker same as for the dimming i know most of you don't care so that's why you should not really bother so much of my non-recommendation because you see or you have seen all the pros and it is a great device after all. And for a flagship in 2017 already priced quite low, it does a great job. Yeah, it does. But I feel that's not quite good enough even though we have just started 2017. I think it will have a hard time competing against the LG G6, even so harder against the S8 and maybe some other ones. And the value isn't the best, but it's definitely not bad for what you get. And things like the performance was great, the in-hand feel, and yeah, all the great things are great. But I think what's even more so important these days is not to have things that will annoy you, which would be the case like I said, for a few things that I don't want to mention again, not to be a whiner. So this has been it. Take it or leave it. See it as what it is. This was my review. I think as fair as possibly. Possible. <laughs> okay, until next time. Bye.